What's going on everybody, Jan's back with another video for you guys, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys something a little bit different on the channel, something I've never done before, and that is I'm bringing you guys my favorite albums of all time, 1 through 10, so guys, stick around if you guys want to know what number 1 is, and also, I do a lot of album tier rankings on this channel, as you guys may or may not know if you've been following the channel thoroughly, you would know that, so... There's going to be some spoilers if you guys have been following the channel because some of these albums that I've mentioned before on the channel are on my list indeed. So you might know what they are already. And guys, if you guys like anything rock and metal related and you have not subscribed yet, feel free to do so. You may unsubscribe at any point if you guys are not feeling it. Of course, hit that like button for the algorithm and also ring that notification bell so you guys know when I'm posting videos just like this. And we're just going to get right on with the list. All right, everybody, so starting off with number 10 of all time, we got Ask Alexandria's Reckless and Relentless record, and that was recorded in Connersville, Indiana. Yes, Joey Sturgis's humble studio out there, and this record was released April 5th, 2011, off of Samir Records, of course, and uh, this is their second record, and I also did a tier rankings list of I did a uh, album tier ranking list of this album as well, so I did every single song. I ranked them, so if you guys want to go check that out, it's on my Ask Alexandria tier list ranking playlist. Reckless and Relentless, simply it's Reckless and Relentless. That's one of the reasons it impacted me, because it's really, really, really like self-descriptive. Um, Because Danny talks about throughout the whole album that the band is really just going through a hard time. They can't control their partying, you know, their drug and their alcohol and their sex habits. They just, they just can't, they can't get it together. And they are just going off the wall. I think during this album cycle is when, um, Danny ended up, um, not ODing. He ended up like getting really, really, really drunk on stage in Seattle and then ended up like having to go to rehab or something. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I know Danny ended up, uh, ODing at some point, but yeah, songs like closure to the stage and records on Rutless. Definitely really, really captious. <laughs> There's a little bit of arrogance throughout the album as well. Like in Relentless and Relentless, I am rock and roll. A lot of chugging, breakdowns, and screaming in this. I think his screams were just a little bit more gnarly in this one, personally. And then stand up and scream compared. And this is like the first time you really start hearing more of a hard rock side. More of that Skid Row kind of style in their music. Like, especially in Closure at the beginning of that song. Um, You hear kind of like that Sebastian Bach kind of like vocal style, which is really freaking cool. And somewhat somewhere, you also hear a song that is completely sung. There's no screaming in it at all. There's a guitar solo in it. It's pretty cool. And that's one of the more sentimental songs on the records. There's no cursing, really arrogant lyrics. It's actually kind of heartfelt. Go check that one out. Uh, my favorite is Closure off of this one. So number nine is The Poison by one of my favorite bands of all time. Bullet for Valentine. If you follow me on social media, you would know that this is one of my favorite bands of all time. And, uh, of course, it's got songs like Tears Don't Fall, which was the first one I heard off this record. Suffocating Under Words of Sorrow, and, uh, all these things I hate it revolve around me. These are all songs I covered before. Uh, of course, Tears and All Things I Hate, I covered with Ocean at least once or twice. Um, how this album impacted me, it was a little bit further into the future. You know, not, like, in 2006, you know what I mean? Probably about more like 2016, 17, I started really getting this record, a former bandmate of mine. Played this record a lot, and then I went and bought it myself, and was amazed, like just just how good this record was, and I really really underestimated it. A fever was always my favorite record until I listened to this one all the way through, and I'm like, okay, okay, there's angst to this, there's heaviness to this. It's like old school riffs mixed with like Kill Switch and Gage, so in like as like dying kind of stuff. And there's like that emo element to it that you know like you get like the girls to like kind of like you know cry in the front row but you're still getting the guys like going yeah 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 let's fucking push each other around and this record was released in the uk on october 3rd 2005 japan january 30th 2006 and here in the united states february 14th and the label was visible noise and looks like trust kill was another one and colin richardson produced this one number eight okay motionless and fucking white some of you probably are surprised that this one makes my top 10 it is motherfucking creatures i cannot get over this album at all it is so freaking good 
Like, Immaculate Misconception was the first song I heard by them, and I was... J j the music video, and I was just floored by, like, the heaviness, the brutality of this, this song, and just how blunt it was and direct it was, you know, and basically saying, like, hey, if you're gonna get in my face, I'm gonna spit in your face, and we're not gonna give a shit. Abigail, of course, is a really, really, really freaking good one. Creatures, the title track, is absolutely freaking amazing. Puppets, the first snow, really, really, really good first, uh, I guess, like, uh, I guess they did, like, a trilogy of that, I could be wrong, but a really good, really good start. Actually, the best out of all the puppets out of that series. Of course, City Lights was more of, like, kind of more, like, an emo track. Um, a bit of screaming is in it. It's kind of, it's one of the softer songs on the record, but it, it's a really, really good variation on this record. And how it impacts me, um, as a musician is, like, well, some of the riffing is really, really terrific, and it, it's just, it's it's Chris's vocal style, I think. I think really like it, it's that relentless, just straightforward, like lyrical style that we needed. You know, something that is unapologetic and, and just true. And you know that this man is saying exactly how he fucking feels. And not to mention that the production is pretty damn good. And this one was produced by Andrew Wade and released off Felix Records. October 12th, 2010 is when it was released. And my favorite off of this record oh, is probably, I'm going to say, Creatures. Number seven, we have Avenged Sevenfold. Yes, and that is their self type of record, Avenged Sevenfold. And this is an album they actually self-produced, which is really, really freaking cool. You can actually go look up videos of them uh, recording this and producing it themselves. It's really, really fucking interesting. And I remember Sinister Gates was... Uh, Annoying the shit out of Zacky with this guitar sound. It, it's absolutely hilarious. Go look at it on YouTube to sometime. My favorite is Afterlife, for sure. As you guys may or may not know, I covered that song with Ocean a few times. I did it with, actually, a few a few of my former bandmates on YouTube at one point. If you guys would like a link to that cover, it's in the description down below. It's a little older, so bear with me on the production. Critical Acclaim, that, that is a damn good track. I got into that because of Rock Band, actually really like the guitar at the beginning and I like um how the rev sings the chorus it's really sick and almost easy of course is another freaking really really good track the only track I don't really like on this is dear god uh scream of course is like the more sexy one on that record and of course you have gunslinger which is like I uh kind of more of a ballad a western kind of ballad really really freaking cool though little piece of heaven a very theatrical cool song really really different from anything they've ever freaking done in their career. Uh, Central Gates is my favorite guitar player of all time, and his solos are exceptional. Afterlife is my all-time favorite solo by him. So that helps with this album getting on this list. And it just it's plain just good songwriting throughout the record. Um, very unique lyrical style that uh, M. Chodos has. And of course, Critical Claim is a little bit more critical on how society is being treated. That's why that's a really strong track on this record to me. Afterlife is just talking about, you know, just going into spiritual life. And if you guys would like actually to see a more in-depth, like, um, perception on each song, then I did a, uh, individual album ranking on this one. You guys can go check that out. I'll leave a link down below to that as well. This one's going to be probably a lot less a surprise to you guys. We got Black Veil Brides, Set the World on Fire. But I promise you, spoiler alert, this is the only record by Black Veil Brides that made the top 10, actually. Believe it or not. But no, this goes right into New Religion. Just kicks your ass straight off the bat. I mean, it just, there's no crazy, like, theatrical intro or anything. It's just, let's just kick your ass. Ba -ba 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 -ba, you know, Falling Angels, which is like the anthem on this record. And one of the first songs that really, 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 really made me a fan. Not the first song I heard though, by them, though. And Love Isn't Always Fair is always, always a really good jam. God bless you. I was a little thrown off by that song, being somebody that is, like, I guess you could say agnostic. Rebel Love Song is one of my all-time favorite Black Veil songs in general. Of course, Savior Legacy as well, is, which was actually what made me a really, really, really big Black Veil Brides fan. Die For You, Ritual, and Youth and Whiskey. Yes, Youth and Whiskey, I think, is such an underrated track. Also, I did a individual album ranking on that, and this was released... June 14th off the record label Lava Slash Universal, which they are not with anymore. They are with Samaria Records now. 
and produced by Josh Abraham and Lucian Walker. But how this impacted me is like really a lot of it is like, of course, the imagery. But I don't want to get all superficial on you guys. Like, of course, the guitar work, very Revenge Sevenfold like, and just like the anthems, like it has that 80s vibe to it, which I really like, but also brings you that feeling of feeling like you belong to something as well. And that it has impacted me to this day. All right, moving on. Number five, we have Dying Is Your Latest Fashion, the first Escape the Fate record ever. And that was with Ronnie Racky as well. Um, the only record that Ronnie Racky was ever on with Escape the Fate. And of course, he went on to start falling in reverse. And will falling in reverse make this top 10 with any of their albums? We'll have to wait and find out. But it was released by Epitaph on September 26, 2006. And it was produced by Ryan Bake and Michael Basket. I guess that's how you say that. Personally, there's, there's, I don't think there's really a bad song on this record. This album just gives you everything, like a little bit of everything in the rock and roll world because Webs We Weave is kind of like that emo, post hardcore vibe. Same thing with like when I go out, but Situations really, really turns it up and makes it kind of a more of a hair metal song or, or like kind of like, yeah, kind of like a poison kind of song. And then the guillotine kind of goes back into that heavy metalcore vibe versus curse. It's kind of just more of a pop punk emo song. You guys, it just really goes on and on and on. It's emo, pop punk, glam metal all mixed into one. That's why I freaking love it. Ronnie, he's a phenomenal artist. I don't care what you think of him. And this album is no exception. Number four, we have Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. And dude, like, I mean, there's no way that this album could not make the top 10. With songs like In The End, One Step Closer, Crawling, Paper Cut. I mean, I remember my sister gave me this record years ago. And I think I explained the story in, again, one of my album tier rankings. But my sister gave me this album. She didn't want to listen to it. And I turned it on. Paper Cut was the first song I heard. And I was just like, huh, I'm going to keep listening. And the whole album blew my mind. I just did a chorus cover of Crawling on this channel recently. If you guys would go rank which style vocal I did better. Just just go to it. With this record, I mean, it just talks about depression, anxiety, and just going through dark, dark, dark periods in your life. Uh, Chester's vocals mixed with Shinoda's rapping vocals. It, it's just incredible. I don't have a freaking single complaint about this record. This was released off of Warner Brothers and produced by Don Gilmore and released October 24th, 2000. So this is an, a little bit of an older one. But we're going to get a little bit older with one of the top three records. And you'll have to stick around for that one as well. Okay, number three, guys. We got Nightmare by Van Sevenfold. And probably none of you are surprised by this one. And this is the second, of course, Van Sevenfold record on this freaking list. And this is an album that I also own that I just listened to relentlessly as well. And if you guys want to go... Again, see my individual song rankings. Go to my tier rankings list to see what I think of every individual song a little bit more thoroughly than this. But really, really, really good shreddy guitar playing again. Not a single bad song on this record. I think uh, Save Me is still one of the most underrated Avenged Sevenfold songs ever. Of course, with the Revs passing and his vocals still being on this record like Fiction, for example. It's crazy to just hear that, knowing that he passed away and all that shit. So them going through that, it was definitely a very, very deep record and a hard record for them to record. And the pain came through and it made the art very, very good. And not to say that the record before that, which was on this top 10, wasn't bad. Still my favorite all time uh, A7X record, as you guys may or may not know. Then, of course, number two is... Appetite for Destruction, this was released July 21st, 1987, so this is the oldest record on the list. It was released by Geffen and produced by Mike Klink, which I have never heard of before. And again, this is a record that is just rolls balls to the wall. The world did not expect this at all. The world was not ready for it at first, but then it started blowing up right fully freaking so. We got Axl Rose with his crazy ACDC, uh, Aerosmith kind of vibe. And then, of course, Slash with his bluesy but heavy metal kind of guitar playing. And Duff with his punk style bass playing. And really killer, like, hair. You got Sweet Shadow of Mine, of course. 
And you just got all these songs telling a story, man. And you got Paradise City telling a story about just a dude getting off the freaking bus. And, hey, this is L.A., man. Welcome to the jungle. That That's, you know, again, like, that, that, that has to do with that story I just told. And, um, yeah, it's just an album that I listened to a lot growing up because of my mother. She played it so much. And I think that's why it's one of my favorite all-time records, to tell you the truth. And to this day. It doesn't skip a beat, man. It, it really, really hits home. All right, guys, drum roll, please. Help me out here. I'm a really poor drummer. We need an actual drummer for this. But anyway, we have at number one of all time. It's not Black Velvet Rides. It's not Vent Shuffle. Not Bullet for a Valentine. It is freaking Slipknot. And that may or may not surprise some of you guys, but this is the album that when we want to play music. Of course, if you guys have been following the channel, I talk about Slipknot a lot. I just saw them live about a month ago at the time of recording this video. So it may or may not surprise you. This album was released May 25th, 2004 and produced by the legendary Rick Rubin and released off of Roadrunner Records, which I think they're still on, if I'm not mistaken. Again, one of those records that does not have a bad song. It has some songs that aren't quite as strong as others, but... I can really, really, really relate to every single song on this record. Uh, Corey, just a man that has gone through a lot of shit in his life. He was abused as a child, had a lot of abandonment issues. Dark, dark, dark stuff on every single record. And this record is no exception at all. Of course, Jimmy Root, Mick Thompson, they did not, did not. They did not miss a beat with this record. I mean, I think their guitar playing is probably the best on this record, to be honest. They were bringing more guitar solos on this record. Actually, I don't even know if there's any guitar solos on Iowa or the first record. I'd have to go back and look. There's a lot more melody, a lot more hard rock vibes on this record than the first two, um, which really appeals to me as well. But this was always the record as a kid that I would come home from school getting, you know, bullied and picked on and turned on and just say, yeah, fuck the world, you know, basically just like Gordon Taylor was. And this was a religious, religious cult-like album for me, man. Like, I am an all-time maggot, man. I mean, that that's for sure. There is no denying that. I think they are the best live band I have ever seen in my life. And this record, to this day, is has just had the biggest impact on me as an artist. It just simply, it just made me want to be an artist. It made me want to play music. It made me want to write. It made me want to start a band. And eventually picking up the guitar. And then doing vocals. As you guys may or may not know. If you guys have made it to this point, thank you so much. I know that was a lot to take in. And if you guys like videos like this, then let me know by hitting that like button. And also commenting away. I want to know what your top 10 favorite albums are of all time as well and if you disagree with my list at all if my list is shit or if you absolutely agree with it let me know hey let's have varying opinions i know that these type of lists can really 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 raise a lot of question and a lot of discussion and i want to discuss that very very topic with you guys and if you guys of course have any suggestions for any future videos then let me know by commenting away as well and if you guys are just watching and not doing any of this stuff i appreciate you either freaking way and guys Rock the fuck on. Jay Adams out.